The Mississippi flows through 10 states from its source in Minnesota to its mouth in Louisiana 6,000 kilometers away. 10 million acres of cities, suburbs, and farmland in the Midwestern United States were inundated by the flooding of the Mississippi and Missouri rivers in the summer of 1993. Flood, which was considered the most devastating in U.S. history, was in some areas above flood stage for 144 days from the 1st of April to the 30th of September. It affected an area the size of the U.K., including nine different states. 32 people died over this period, 30,000 people had to be evacuated, and up to 60,000 homes had damage caused to them in some way, shape or form. The damage was so extensive that there was $10 billion worth of damage. Unfortunately, only 10% of the people actually had flood insurance. However, as this damage was considered to be so bad, the US government declared the flood area a disaster area, making everybody eligible for relief. The Midwest was particularly harshly hit as it was the end of the line of the river, which meant that all of the water that had so far flowed down the river had to pass through this point, which meant there was far too much water than the river could handle. St. Louis and Des Moines was the cities that were affected the most, with Des Moines lost its water for 19 days and in St. Louis barge traffic was stopped for two months, costing the barge owners one million dollars a day. Also, a vital communication links were lost, hampering the relief effort that was being taken place. Extremely heavy rainfall had fallen in a large area of the Mississippi drainage basin. The rain was so hard that in some areas, such as North Dakota and Kansas, received more than double their average rainfall. In some cases, over 160 millimetres of rain fell. In southern Lower, on the 4th and 5th of July alone, 150% of the average rainfall in, in all of July. The ground had already been saturated from previous rainfall in spring, meaning the soil could not absorb any more water, making it run straight into the river, making more water flow down the river than it could handle. The unusually heavy rain was caused when warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico met cold, dry air from Canada. When the moist air cooled, it released the water which it was carrying. A high-pressure system over the southeast USA prevented this weather system from moving away, causing a constant supply of storms for the Midwest states. Flooding was made worse because of the fact that 80% of the original wetlands along the river had been drained since 1940. These normally act as natural storage reservoirs. They store water during heavy rainfall and release it slowly as through flow. Therefore, runoff is reduced and so is the risk of flooding. Not only where were the wetlands drained, making the water run straight off, but the wetlands also had to be urbanised, with lots of concrete and tarmac allowing little through flow. The Mississippi is an extremely highly engineered river, however before this time the river was constantly changing course and was very shallow, meaning that the river co cruisers often crashed. One of the first changes that was made was the introduction of wing dikes. These made the river narrow as they caught dirt and so on from the river, but it also made it deeper, allowing more water to flow quicker and the pleasure cruisers no longer crashed. Another key river defence was the introduction of levees. These contained the river between two solid walls if it were to flood. Then the river was straightened, making it 250 kilometres shorter in total. This meant that the water could flow more rapidly from its source to the mouth. However, this meant that when there was massive amounts of rainfall, there was too much water for the river to handle, which caused the levees to burst. One of the final alterations that was made was the inter introduction of control dams. These are designed to control the amount of water flowing, allowing more water if there was a lot of rain, and little if there was a build-up downriver. However, these did not work as the sheer volume of water meant that the water could not be slowed, as it would mean that the areas upstream would become blocked, so they were left open, causing de devastation nearing the mouth. So the question remains, can big rivers really be contained?